Hello and welcome to the China Podcast. We've made it to round two. Yeah, we survived the first episode. We sure did. Can you can you feel the creative energy? I'm loving it. Yeah. And by the way, we are now on Twitter. We are. You can find us at the China Podcast. I'm going to have to learn how to use Twitter. But, you know, we are on Twitter. You've, you know how to use it. I know how to use it. You've never opened a Twitter page before. Never tweeted once in my life. Tweeted. Tweet, 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 tweet. Oh, tweet, tweet, like a little birdie. That's what they say okay, on Twitter. Okay, That's okay. The, 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 the Twitter language. Oh, I, I hear it's just for arguments, though. Yeah, it, it can it be a can toxic be a, environment. Yeah, well, I'm, you I'm, can tailor it to suit your own needs. That's good. I, I want to see... You can block out... Lots of people well, who then, will, will yeah, I'll give have, you trouble. I'll have the funny memes and that sort of stuff. Yeah, the memes. <laughs> the memes, yeah. I like the memes. So, yeah. Um, give us a follow. Um, retweet our posts. Give us a like. Um, we also have an email account now, we on, do. don't we? The, the China Podcast at Outlook.com. The China Podcast at Outlook.com. Yeah, please... Send us an email. Write to us. Le- leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us how we're doing. Yeah. I mean, your feedback is most welcome. It's most appreciated. Yeah. We are we need... Well, we. this is our first time doing anything like this, so we want feedback. We want to know what you want to hear. Absolutely, yeah. And you can listen to our podcasts uh, on Acast and Spotify. Yeah. For now, but we are exploring other avenues. We are indeed. Um, so we've been trying to get them up everywhere and there's been a bit of technical issues. There's been a few technical issues. Yeah, it's taken a lot longer than we we might have envisioned. Yeah, so what, what? when did we record the first? We recorded the first one a few days before Halloween. A few days before Halloween. I think so. Uh, but we didn't get it up until the 8th of November. Yeah. Um, it's the second week of November now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so you know, we're, yeah, we're, we're trying to tie up some loose ends, aren't we? We are trying to, lo- we, well, we didn't know what to expect. We were trying to get it into everywhere and we used ACAST. ACAST were pretty good and they, they link to all the different sites. But right now, it's not actually up on all the different sites. It will be eventually. Um, yeah, it's in the process. Yeah. Um, w- we are awaiting approval. We are awaiting approval from many different things. And we didn't know what to think when we launched ourselves into it, but Rome wasn't built in a day. That is true. Um, that is very true. But so far, it's been a blast. Yeah, it's becoming a passion. Yeah, it takes a bit of work, but it's paying off. It's paying off. It is. And you know, when, when we first sat down to discuss the concept of creating a podcast, I think we pretty much decided from the outset that we would first do it for ourselves. Yeah, and the rest will follow. Like, we're we're learning how to do it as we go. We're learning on the job. Yeah, precisely. Now, well, I mean, if we are satisfied with the product, then somebody else will too. Yeah, well, like, if we can reach one person, then we've done something right. Yeah, unless that person is a serial killer. Oh, then we're fucked. What about that, when that guy in Belgium that's been listening? That one listener we had yeah. in Belgium. I wonder, is he a serial killer? I hope not. I hope not. Uh, if you're listening to us there in Belgium, um, yeah, send us an email. Tell us who you are. And, you know, don't kill my family. <laughs> don't send an assassin. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't need an assassin. But luckily for us, it's quite hard to get into China at the moment. So Yeah, I we're, s- we're safe for a little bit. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we are. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Owen, I must say, you seem mo- full of beans this week. I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling spicy. You know, because... <laughs> <laughs> like Chongqing hot pot, eh? Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> you weren't quite your boisterous self last time we sat down to record. No, You could kind of no. hear it in your voice. You, yeah. were, you were somewhat lethargic. Oh, it was one of those days. It was one of those days. Or what us expats might call those China days. Exactly. A China day. Do you have many so-called China days on? Ah, once in a while. Once in a while. Once in a blue moon. Today was nearly one. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It was sunshine is out today. It's cold yesterday. Today is not one. 
It is. The fog is cleared. Yes. Um, bright blue skies. Mm, yeah. Always good for the mood. Isn't it? Um, yeah, but the talking about China days, you know, in my experience, maybe once or twice a year I, I have a an old China day. Yeah. Nothing too extreme, thankfully. But you know, expats they do need a great deal of patience sometimes living it's, in China. It's kinda it's difficult. It's, yeah. It can be difficult. It can be difficult. There's there's the old cliche, I suppose, of putting it down to cultural differences. Yeah. But you know, I think from an expat's perspective, it's it's got more to do with a lack of understanding or a lack of maybe consideration on the part of the, the person you're dealing with. Yeah, it's because it's so homogenous. They, they know their way of doing it and they don't know the other way. And it's, it's essentially, you get China days when you get screwed over by unreasonable expectations. I think that's the one. And always at short notice. Oh, 99% of the time. Today it was five minutes before I had the thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Always the way. And I mean, in these scenarios, a bit of homesickness can start to creep in. Especially if you have a plan, you're you're, you're always questioning, like, why did I ever? Why did I ever get here? Why did I end up in this place? Like, yeah, why did you get on the plane yeah. to begin with? Um, but I mean, China was your first and last stop. On a round the world trip, wasn't <laughs> it? it was, yeah, I don't know. That's a it's a bit of a bit of a mad one. Yeah, but yeah, I was we're, going we're, we're, world, we're going yeah. back a while, I think. Yeah, going back a fair bit. Yeah, not this um, decade. Was it the la was it the pre it was previous the, decade yeah, or the yeah, one before? Yeah, 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 something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I only say I stayed in China because I stayed in China because it was it. it it was a pretty happening place. It was a pretty, pretty, pretty cool place. It was completely different. The expectations, the culture, everything. It was completely different to what you'd expect. Right, right. right. Uh, do you have any regrets about no. not continuing on your journey? Ah, you think about it every now and then. But no, 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 no. Um, do you know what I find good for the mental health when we have these kind of setbacks? Serial killers? No, not serial killers. No. What, what, no. no. Well, unless you're running away from a serial killer, you might get a bit yeah. of. No, I'm thinking about just like getting a knife and going and. Oh, oh, no. the other way around. Yeah. No, definitely. No, not. definitely no, no, not. No, no. no, nothing like that. Nothing no. like that. Something very simple, like going out for a walk or even a run. Yeah, I, I, it is great. To, it's great to get outside, and like just having a bit of exercise helps clear the head. Um, you know, to, like I said today, just a sunny day. Just coming out off of the cold day yesterday, it's just great for the endorphins. So you're you're training for the, or no, that's you were training for the Chongqing half marathon. I was, yeah. Um, it was supposed to be on the fifth of December, but yeah. it's been postponed. Yeah. Um, hopefully they they reschedule it sometime soon. No idea what time or anything like that. No. It could be the fifth of December, twenty twenty two. For be. all we know, for could all be 2023. we know, yeah, we we had a a bit of a COVID scare in yeah. in recent days. Not not so bad. Like I was, I, I was still working and all, but there's stuff closed. So, certain yeah. areas of certain areas. of the city were closed. Yeah, not everywhere. Not everywhere. Um, but yeah, there so were only like five or six cases. Yeah, something like that. Over the first two days, and then since, nothing. There are five or six cases, and then they shut down half of the city. Yeah, uh, and that goes to show... And, then, and when I mean shut down, they, they locked them in. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they locked down neighbourhoods, yeah. basically. Yeah, and basically, they just locked down the neighbourhood, and you're not getting in or out. And Then you, there's a, a health code. If you go near the area, you, you're tracking and tracing, and then you get a big red on your on your health code yeah if you've gone through if a, you've gone through a, a high risk area a high risk area yeah never seen a red one actually have you ever seen a red one uh maybe a screenshot or something or a yellow one i've seen a yellow one you've seen a yellow one uh, just I've, somewhere in the middle i suppose i've only ever had the green and then the gold outline saying that you've been vaccinated yes the gold outline around your mm -hmm. your vaccination code that's pretty cool it's pretty nice yeah yeah, yeah. Um, uh running you how like the half marathon, what, how do you train for a half marathon? Well, talking now from complete inexperience, I guess a lot of dedication and commitment 
as well as a willingness to put in the miles is involved. Uh, That's possible. Like, I mean, I've never run in a half marathon before, but this time last week, I had never run more than 12 kilometers in one go. But you know what? I managed 18 kilometers. That's a hell of a go. That's a fucking lot. And it was tough because of the route I chose to take. Uh, now, I was naive, I'm going to say that much. That's in my the, house to your house about six times. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um, mm. But, you know, like I hadn't run that route before, and the thing about it was I was unaware, completely unaware of the terrain. Um, and it was mostly like up and down hill, mm. uh, the uphill being on the way back. Way back from where? Where were you going to? Uh, the way back from the Jaling River. There the and back again from my house. That's, that's what it is. Oh, the Jaling River, there and back. A Hobbit's Tale by Bilbo Baggins. I, I don't know. Bilbo loved the walking, but I'm not so sure about running. Yeah, there were plenty of times he had to run away from them orcs. Ah, but he was cheating, you know. He, he was wearing that ring. Yeah, that's just doping. That's a doping in the talking word. <laughs> <laughs> Vad would be after him. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, there, but the the return journey involved like this one continuous uphill slog of, of four kilometers or five even. I love it. And yeah, towards the end of it, I was a kind of crawling pa- uh, yeah. pace. Um, but you know, the strangest thing happened in that once I got to the top, yeah. and I kept going. You know, the terrain it flattens out, yeah. and I got this this second burst of wind, and. Started to speed up once more. Yeah, hats off to you. Uh, but yeah, I, I have lots and lots of work to do yet. Um, but I'm, like, I'm happy that I broke the, that kind of mental barrier. Um, and I know now what I'm capable of. And I'm, I'm confident in pulling it off. Um, mm. Whenever they put it on. Whenever they put it on again, yeah. I, I would have had, speaking from now, about just a little less than a month to go. Yeah. Um, I would have got in enough training between now and then, but it, yeah. I've still got a little bit longer now to. Yeah. You got the running bug yet? You got to I don't know. Um, I mean, I can say that I enjoy it. And why? Why did you decide to do a half marathon? Well, there's a group of guys here in Chongqing who are bloody mad into running, um, and a few of them have run in half marathons before here in the city, and I kind of taken inspiration from them, to be honest. It's good to have it's good to have lads around, a bit of camaraderie, bit of bit of team spirit, you know, and 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 they can they can keep you going. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you have mind like minded people, yeah, in your in your circle of friends, your your circle of yeah people around can you. inspire you to get up in the morning. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and you're back playing football again, isn't that right? I, I am. It's just a seven aside on the Tuesday. Um, don't not going to be playing any games on way the weekend. Um, it's nice to meet the lads, have a kick about, um, getting a few kicks. I'm not not fit enough to be honest, um, but it's, it gives me a bit of added interest and another reason to get fit. Yeah, and mm. I mean that goes for both of us actually. We've joined, we've both joined the the Chongqing International Football Club, and uh, they're sitting pretty at the top of the table. Three wins from three. Three wins from three and a goal from the from his own half by Fernando. Wow, wow! Yeah, I missed that one. I did see the video though. Yeah, I I missed that one too. Uh, but yeah, the perfect start. You ever try fishing? Uh, maybe once when I was young. Why is that your next venture? No, you see that the uh, you seen the big lake that they're building. Um, it's being built in the middle of the new park here beside us. Is it finished yet? It's nearly finished. It's nearly finished. You think they'll? You think you'll be able to fish in it? Fishing, in a, in a public park? Why not? Why not? You have to make use of what's around you. If there's, I often see people fishing in the rivers, all the rivers around Chongqing, people fishing them. Nice way to spend an afternoon. You know, my wife's family, they have a pond. Um, that's pretty. It's too big to call a pond. Too small to call a lake. Um, but they they have fishing it and. Then they, they catch catch fish, cook it for the dinner. It's great. Right. What? Well, so they just fish in this pond? Yeah, there's a lot of fish in it. You, whatever you catch, you cook. 
that's for dinner and if you don't catch it and you kill a chicken or grab some eggs or plenty of vegetables around you know fruit best food you could eat I swear to god best food just it's right there in front of you it's so good that, that sounds cool um, so so I mean they can fend for themselves but like what has that got to do with fishing in the park do you think you'll be able to do it do you think you can fish in that park I don't know we can give it a try I'd like to give it a try I'm, 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 if I see somebody fishing in that park I'm going to get a rod and I'm going to go down and I'm going to fish in that park is there any law or rules against not fishing in a pond or in a, in a, in a lake in a, in a public park I have no idea I have no idea I see lads fishing everywhere everywhere anytime you see water lads go fishing hey but like they do all sorts of things in parks you know yeah, um, I mean, I I imagine this this park will have some exercise machines, will it? Like like in other parks, it'll have loads of them. Yeah, the old people they love them. Yeah, they do indeed. Uh, and of course, you've got the women dancing, and the kids walking around with their with their candy floss and balloons at the weekend. The candy floss is great. Have you ever seen them with all the mad designs in them? I have. And the pink and the yellow and very the colourful. They are. Yeah. Very 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 trendy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're really hipster like <laughs> yeah this is all the, the usual kind of stuff that you, you'd see in a in any Chinese park really yeah them parks in China anyway they get a lot of use and the exercise machines they get a lot of use too uh, yeah it's a great alternative to going to the gym especially for those who probably don't have membership or a, yeah or a bit maybe self conscious I suppose yeah. about gyms seen a few of them outdoor gyms when I went home a couple of years ago yeah it, it seems that you know, when Beijing had the Olympics in 2008, the country went on a kind of like a fitness drive. Um, they installed public exercise machines everywhere. And I mean, that seems to to spread to other countries around the world now. Yeah, it has. Yeah. It's not just the parks either. There's, they, they put them in the residential areas, put them in the residential buildings. Yeah, yeah they're, they're around most uh, apartment buildings and in many public spaces. Um, I mean, they get used to. That's the great thing about it, yeah. and it's great to see people of all ages, particularly the elder generations, using them, keeping themselves fit. Yeah. Did you ever use them yourself? Ah, maybe just for fooling around when I was passing by or something like that. You know, I like the cross trainers. The cross trainers are kind of cool. They're real simple. They're easy, easy cardio, no strain on your joints and. You see sit-up benches and pull-up bars, and they're pretty cool too. Pull-up bars are pretty low, so you have to cross your legs to do it. So, what, what you can't do a pull-up without I do, one? I, I, like, I can do a pull-up, but I can do about three or four. I should be able to do more. Yeah, keep going and the hard work will pay off. No, you're not all like you. <laughs> Come off <laughs> it. Anyone can get fit when they put their mind to it. Come on. Nah, it's easy to let yourself go probably just as easy to keep yourself in shape well it's all about perspective isn't it mm. do you ever hear about Sinead Diver the name rings a bell she's from Bell Mullet Bell Mullet in County Mayo Mayo being in the west of Ireland of course if you don't already know uh, but why should I have heard about her she's a runner she runs marathons you want to hear something nuts yeah go on she ran the marathon in the Olympics alright well that's not nuts. It's impressive. But it's not nuts. Well, I'll tell you the nuts a bit. Most people start running when they're like most Olympians. They start running when they're a child, and then they develop into their teens, and then into adulthood. Sinead Diver started running when she was thirty-three. So how do you mean she started running when she was thirty-three? She had never ran before. She was. She just had a child. She just had her first child. Um, and she went, wanted to get into shape after she had two ch two children actually yeah. so I mean how the the transition from having just given birth to running in the Olympics having never ran in her entire life I mean surely she was only there to make up the numbers she came 10th she came 10th she was 4 minutes behind the winner and she was 44 years old she was 44 year old she came 10th and she was four minutes behind the winner. Wow. Now, 
right, two things there. One, right, so sh- she actually did have 10 or 11 years of running experience. Yeah, yeah by the time, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, two, she competed at her first Olympics when she was 44. That's insane. I mean, that that scale of achievements completely went under the radar in Ireland. I heard nothing about it. I mean, they, they, they would have had songs and huge crowds at Dublin Airport or that kind of thing. She was running for Australia. Ah, I see. So, uh, why Australia? Not Ireland? Well, she started running in 2010 and she wanted to run in the World Championships in Beijing. Uh, and she ran, she ran the marathon in two hours and 34 minutes and that qualified her for the World Championships in Ireland. Or for for Ireland to run in Beijing, yeah. Um, but they changed the qualifying time that same year that she qualified. They changed the qualifying time, um. So she was thirty seven year old when she qualified, and they changed the rules. That seems unfair. Yeah, she didn't didn't bother her though. She 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 still qualified for Australia, so she ran for Australia. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, why Australia? Um. So she moved there. In two thousand and two, and she went there to get to, to go to university. She went, went to get a postgraduate in computing. All right, okay. Um, that's why I, that's why I bring her up because she's an expat. Yeah, she's yeah. she's the same as us. She's an expat. She's a mid thirties ex, expat that woke up one morning and went for a run, and she's been to two world championships and the Olympics, and she would have went to another Olympics, but she missed Rio because of an injury. So how old are you now? I'm in my 30s. And you're running your first half marathon? Well, I mean, it's hardly the Olympics, is it? Well, you never know unless you try. Well, there's hope for you yet. I mean, I, I read a study that people who exercise regularly when they're younger, they have, they have hearts, lungs and, and muscles even equivalent to people in their 40s when they are in their 70s. It sounds, it sounds interesting, but I'm already in my 40s. And it's already too late for me. <laughs> It's never too late, come on. Yeah, take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. So anyway, so these exercise machines. Big question is for me, why? Why, why, why are there so many outdoor gyms in China? So we found out. And the answer is actually quite complex. It, it's got the Olympics, it's got demographics, it's got nudge theory. And it's got global wellness goals from the United Nations. Yeah, so in China, installing free facilities was initially aimed at getting the aging population outdoors. And it was part of a fitness drive surrounding the the 2008 Beijing Olympics, right? Um, Now, when the Olympics came to China in 2008, there was a lot of national pride surrounding it. A whole load of national pride and you know Chinese people they love the Olympics they love their sport in general um, I mean here it is much more common to see a uh, like random medalists advertising anything from powdered milk to, to life assurance um, and of course the Beijing Olympics was the first time that China a country with with such a massive population had hosted the event yeah I think it uh, I think a lot has to do with the amateur aspect of the Olympics as well, you know, kind of sit, fits in with the, the communist ethos or whatever. But, you know, they had big 50 meter Olympic rings on the Great Wall at Badaling um, when I was there, oh geez, 2010, so it was just after, just after the Olympics. Beijing is actually hosting the Winter Olympics next year as well. That's right, and let's hope that one goes ahead. Was it this year? Uh, no, t- 2022. 2022. So, January, I think. January, yeah. We're only two months away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two months, two and a half months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the 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 Olympics in two thousand eight, the the actual Olympics, not the winter ones. Um, it was a real big deal. Was. I mean, you had, I think, ten thousand competitors from all around the world. Yeah. Uh, competing in China for the first time, um, and what they did here to prepare for that was the expanded infrastructure. They they reassessed congestion controls. They they began to seek alternative power sources. The planning stage went 
far beyond what would be considered the normal scope of the games. Um, planning for the games not only covered the logistics of the games themselves, but also public health in general. Um, and the Beijing Games was the most expensive Olympic Games of all time, costing somewhere between 40 and 44 billion US dollars. Um, of course, this was this was passed by the Sochi the Sochi Winter Olympics in Russia in 2014, but that was down to massive financial mismanagement. Yeah, I don't know. Did Putin get a few bob for that? Probably. Yeah, him and his cronies. But yeah, they built they built six new venues, um, and they they renovated loads of other ones, um, and they built a, a massive public park. Um, it co- and that cost over two billion dollars. Um, one of those buildings that was built was the the Bird's Nest Stadium, um, which is a fantastic stadium. Actually, it's re- it really is pretty. Um, it's got stainless steel girders that are are shaped like a bird's nest. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's really quick to get in and out of because the when you enter into the stadium you actually enter into the middle of the stadium and it's an entire concourse across the the middle of the stadium so you know it's pretty cool um but my favorite now is the aquatic center the aquatic center is is they call it the water cube it looks like bubbles and then at night they have um lots of different it has a light show. It has the the usual Chinese light show, but because of the the texture, I suppose, of the outside of the building, it looks really cool. Yeah. Um, now I mentioned that there was a drive to get the aging population outdoors. The the people that came to came with the games. Um, in China, much like any other country, there are sports lotteries. You know the ones you pick some numbers and win an exorbitant amount of money. Uh, in the run-up to the games, one third of this money was generated by these sport lotteries, uh, and it was used to fund outdoor gyms. The government, through the lottery, installed twenty million meters squared of outdoor public exercise equipment. And that's, uh, that was just the start of it, because they didn't stop. Then no, they no. kept going. Yeah, I mean, for Americans out there, that is two hundred and twenty million square feet of public gyms across the country so Owen, why did they do that now have you ever seen the film Wayne's World 2 so there's a guy there's an Indian there's a half naked Indian in it and he says if you book them they will come what do you mean there's a concept in behavioural economics and it's called the nudge theory have you ever heard of nudge theory you're going to have to explain that one to me. Right. Well, an easy way to explain it to you and to all the men listening out there would be painting a fly on a urinal. A fly on a urinal? Right. Fly on a urinal. What's that all about? So you're going to the bathroom and you need to use the urinal. But you see a fly on the urinal. Okay. Most people, most people, people will try to hit the fly right <laughs> that's what they'll do they'll yeah. try to hit the fly right <laughs> now that's nudge theory okay okay <laughs> now in really it's in really simple terms right it's it's positive reinforcement and indirect suggestions okay and it's used to influence decision making so if you go to because like a guy in a a guy in a in a, in a, a pub owner a, a bar owner he doesn't want people to you know kind of spray urine all over the the urinal of course he doesn't he wants people to pee on that fly yeah all right would it, would it, would it not sp- when the when the pee hits the fly would it not sp- kind of spray off no but the, the fly is in directions. the the fly is in the right place you oh, know right, okay. the fly is in the right place that it doesn't spray off everywhere right like you go to the world the the world cup that was on uh, you go into the urinals i'm sure people have seen this cause it couldn't have only been me but okay. in some bars you see uh little small plastic goals with kind of floating footballs in the in the plastic goals inside the urinals 
Oh, all right, where you have that kind of little meshy thing, little meshy thing, oh, and okay. you'd have a, this little yeah, yeah. ball, and you'd 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 pee on the ball, and you know the you, because of course you are. You're watching the football. You're going to pee on the ball, right? And so basically, right, it makes people do what you want them to do, and what's good for them, without actually telling them to do it. You 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 basically put the person's decision. You put the decision in people's brains and there was no decision there before. So you're just putting a decision in their brains where there wasn't a decision before. And people mostly choose what's beneficial to them. In the case of the fly, people realize that it's not a fly. It's a, it's, they realize really quickly because they try to pee on the fly and the fly doesn't fly away. But they also rationalize after trying to pee on the fly that that's probably where they should pee anyway so and so they pee there right to, to create the, the least amount of least mess. amount of mess least amount of mess all right and what does that mean in the larger context right so let's take a larger context take this nudge theory and blow it up into a larger context you go the case of china Right, so you got in China, you've got older people, you've got an elderly generation of people who meet outside and they sit at benches and they sit at tables and they play mahjong, um, they play Chinese chess, they play cards, they're always outside. There's, there's people outside that go dancing every evening, they do tai chi. Um, you know, in the parks, you see guys hitting spinning tops with whips, um, could be anything. You would, like you, you never know what you see in a park. Never. Yeah, that, that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's just a, it's crazy. You know, it, it's actually crazy. Like the people, the elderly population, they spend their time outdoor outdoors. Yeah, and I mean, they're all early birds. Uh, yeah, they're all. Or- they're up at the crack of dawn. You know, then outside to buy their breakfast and congregate yeah. and watch the world go yeah. by. Yeah, and. So when it, when these guys are out in the morning and they're doing their tai chi or they're they're, just, they're doing their dancing in the evening, for every one of them, there's for every one of those outside doing something, there's somebody watching. There's somebody watching them do that, and they know that the people outside are being active, they're being healthy, and maybe they're a little bit jealous that these people are out there doing activities. So. The government put a decision in their head that wasn't there before. They put exercise equipment beside them. All right. So, like, what you're saying is that those people they see this happening before their eyes, and they, I mean, they, they feel inspired to take action. Yeah. Yeah, and that's no that's no theory on a social level, um, and and that in itself it gets people more active and it makes them healthier and I mean but like the, the question becomes then how effective is it we know ourselves that like people are getting bigger yeah they are um, you know, everywhere yeah all around the world and I mean there are more and more ob- obese people right now uh, than there were ever before in history uh, and like we're in the middle of a, a global pandemic uh where people, of course, with underlying conditions are being affected by the, the COVID-19 much more severely Absolutely. than those who you would consider healthy. Yeah. Um, and, like, this is a problem. It doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. Um, in China, I mean, the, the effectiveness of these gyms has been evaluated as a net good. Yeah, it has. And they continue to be built. Yeah. And we're about to enter China's 14th five-year plan and sports and public health is a really big issue at the heart of this plan yeah well so there's probably people out there and they're thinking oh the 14th five-year plan what's the 14th five-year plan well for those of you that that don't know um the five-year plan started let's see we're not going into the 14th so it's 65 about 750 years ago no <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> you can do the maths. They're five-year plans. Right, so we're going into the 14th of them. Now, the five-year plans, what they are, they're initiatives, and they guide 
economic and social policy for the next five years. So their guidelines for what the the local, provincial governments, what their planning has to be based around. So they say, well, we want more of this, and then the local governments then get more of that. All right, and so we're in the 14th five-year plan now. Uh, China joined the 13th five-year plan. Uh, it looked at sports and health as something which is and can continue to be a net positive for the country, going so far as to say it can be a pillar for national economic growth. And so they are looking at to further expand this during the 14th five-year plan. Yeah. Uh, on the agenda is reaching a level where 38% of the population receive what is determined by experts as enough exercise. Now, to give you an idea of what sport is worth in China monetarily, the GASC and the National Bureau of Statistics, they jointly announced in late 2020 that sports-related businesses in China generated around 1.12 trillion yuan. Now, that's about... 170 something billion dollars yeah uh, and this 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 in revenue in 2019 uh, up 11 12 percent from 2018 um, yeah. and all this contributed to a total industry value of over 2.9 trillion UN uh, total output was more than 10 percent higher than in 2018 uh, now that's a lot of money is. And the number is getting bigger, uh, like especially when you when you consider professional sports in China. Um, I mean, is comparatively not as popular domestically as in somewhere like the US or the UK. Yeah, because when you go to the US or the UK, and you talk to people, they they'll naturally lean towards baseball or basketball or anything or something like that. that it, it's not like that here. Is it, like people don't lean towards like the, the 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 Chinese Super League or anything like that. It just doesn't have the same traction, you know, as as would the NFL or the British Premier League. You know, they're just they're just more popular. But that one of the things there is, and this is a, a very valid point, is that the people who are using the exercise equipment right now, they're generally elderly. It's not always the elderly, but it's it's not the adolescents and the middle aged people. If we take if you take the fitness industry, so gyms and stuff like that, there's a global average of market penetration. I like numbers by the way. People who go in and spend money to get fit around the world is about six point five percent of the population of the world. Go in, spend money, get fit in a gym. Right. Now China falls below that China falls at about 4% now if you take somewhere like Europe where these leagues and 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 where where professional sport is much more popular um, it's about 7.8% um, some countries in Europe uh, Sweden and the Netherlands they're at 15% so 15% of the population of Sweden and ne the Netherlands pay money go into the gym and that's how they get fit. Now, comparatively to China, that's a you know China's at four percent. Sweden and the Netherlands are at fifteen percent. Um, those figures are from Del Watt, by the way. And you love figures. I do love figures. <laughs> love an old spreadsheet. So, like, <laughs> right, based on what you just said, there seems to be a big gap to close. Yeah, it's a huge gap, and it, there is a, a massive gap. And you say to yourself, "How do you do it?" You know. How do you do it? Well, you can force them, you can inspire them, or you could nudge them. Well, you can force a kid to do PE in school. You can nudge an elderly person in a gym, or to use the outdoor gym. But like, how do you inspire people? Well, the fourteen five-year plan is looking to address this. Also, uh, they are looking at expanding the infrastructure around sports in general. Uh, they're looking at opening more sporting venues, holding more sporting events, and hoping to encourage the younger population to participate in more sporting activities. I'd like it to watch it. Yeah, and the younger population are more likely to join gyms and get involved in sport that way. Yeah. Well, we were talking there about the US, the UK, and China, 
Um, and we know they're big, big deals at the UN. Yeah. Now, in 2000 and 2015, and wait till you hear this name, the UN Office of Sport for Development and Peace. That's a glorious name. Isn't it fantastic? It's like the UN Office of Sport, right? The Office of Sport for Development and Peace. So that published a report um, on how to meet the sustainable development goals for 2030. Those goals are, they're, they're pretty interesting, those ones, you know? Them? Yeah, so the sustainable development goals you're talking about here uh, are the ones which range from sanitation to equality for women. Um, and there's there's a long list of stuff on their yeah, website which you can look it up, look it yeah, up. Yeah, you can cool. look it up. They're everywhere. Like they're, The whole United Nations are looking to go, go towards them. Anyway, that's them. Anyway, the United Nations Office of Sport for Development and Peace. Seriously, what a name. They, report, they publish a report on how sport can be used to meet all of those goals. All right. So, yeah, that, but, you know, that sounds a bit pie in the sky. Yeah, uh, yeah mm. like I suppose as part of a broader plan, it might work. Um, like take affordable clean energy, for instance. You know, the, the stadium that they will use for the World Cup final next it's year. Big York, yeah. Yeah, in, in Qatar. Yeah. That's going to produce a, a lot of its own energy through like solar panels the right place for it yeah and then you have the the olympic stadium in tokyo too that that uses solar panels to to water plants in in good the idea. local area around that stadium did you know that yeah, good idea good idea anyway the outdoor gym thing right so we know this works right we know it works and anybody anybody of you listening outside of china you can probably tell us about outdoor gyms in your area um but there's a big difference in western countries they've put outdoor gyms in many many places and they're mostly used by younger people and there's another report it was by the center for the disease control and prevention which we mentioned earlier about the about you know getting people healthy and stuff yeah this is the center for disease control and prevention mm -hmm. in the united states they put they published a report about the impact of these outdoor gyms on health in the community. Um, to, in 2008, they published a few of them and they found that when they put gyms in public spaces, it increases the amount of people e getting exercise. So it's not people who wouldn't normally exercise, they actually go and get some exercise. Right. And that directly decreases the prevalence of chronic disease it increases the public health and decreases the mm. prevalence of disease mm. and on the topic of health like china's right to be concerned because it's facing severe levels of obesity and, and rising rates of chronic illnesses mm. um and, and the president president xi has, has always called for a national fitness program and he re and recently like changes to china's national sports law have been proposed um Schools, they're expected to host mandatory gym classes for all their pupils every single day. That's pretty cool. That's pretty um, cool. And this is just one of 55 revisions to the law. 55? Um, 55, yeah. That's a lot. That's, that's an awful lot, yeah. This is yeah. this this law has been in place, I think, am I right in saying, I'm going to have to fact check this later, but since 91, I think, yeah. I was doing a bit of reading about it. So it's been in place a long time, and this is, the, on this occasion, it, the most revisions it has used. Yeah. Right? Um, and it, like it also encourages contribution from the local government and residential committees. Uh, so it could probably have a, a significant trickle-down effect. I like trickle-down effects. I don't like trickle-down effects, but this might be a good one. You know, you, the trickle down economics is a waste of time, but this one might actually might actually work. Um, the UK, they put in policies. Um, they have the moving more, living more. That's from the Olympics in 2012. Um, now, uh, I got some figures on them because I love figures. Um, that shows they're, they're right, basically, to have, they're really worried in the UK about 
young people and health they found that most adults were actually getting enough exercise um over half of adults were getting enough exercise but when you get the kids young boys and young girls almost a minuscule amount like 16 20 percent mm, yeah something around there um and that's concerning that's a problem because diabetes is becoming a massive thing and which ties in with the obesity yeah um 150 minutes of exercise a week that's what you need apparently to get a 50 percent reduced chance of type 2 diabetes now if you go and couple that with a good diet um healthy food that dramatically reduces again and do you know i've been looking into the to the uk and their program because <clears throat> there's something i'm going to do and you're my inspiration all right so what are you going to try what are you going to do right so there's a thing and it's on the end it's on a, the nhs website in england it's the national health service website um and it's an it's an app for your phone it's called couch to 5k okay so what does couch to 5k do so there's a lad there's a man in england and he wanted his mother he was worried about his mother she was a couch potato she sit down and watch coronation street east how, Enders, how old was she she was in her 50s okay um and she was she was overweight she wasn't getting any exercise at all and he came up with a plan and this plan has became endorsed by the nhs and his idea was to get his mother running within nine weeks right he had his 50 year old couch potato mother that didn't do any exercise running 5k well good for her that's a huge turnaround it's brilliant mm. yeah i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it and yeah i am i'm gonna do are it are you a couch potato i'm I, I have a tendency to be a couch potato but like i play football you are playing football yeah, that's true. I, I play football i try to get out as much as i as i can I, I could, as much as I can I can do more mm. we can all do we more we can all do more of course yeah yeah and I think it like and you guys out there that, that are listening you guys can probably do do more as well like but I played football for two and a half hours last night and if I can do that I can run 2k I can run 5k so what you need to do is to stop eating donuts and come and run with me some evening you reckon it's too late uh, now that they've postponed the Chongqing half marathon you reckon are any slots will open up it is possible you never know but if not you can always spectate I'll bring the donuts save me one for the finish line I will of course I will of course anyway so that's it for this week um, we hope you've enjoyed listening if you're an expat in China you ever find yourself overwhelmed just take a deep breath pause Take a moment to yourself. And just go out for a walk. Clear your head. If it's a sunny day, even better. Um, a lot of the times that's easier said than done. But, you know, you, you deserve it. Treat yourself right. Treat yourself right. You deserve it. Yeah. And we're not just speaking only for expats in China, but the same goes for anyone, anywhere in the world. It sure does. Sure does. And remember, before we go, remember to look us up on Twitter. Yeah. And... Look, uh, send us an email, write to us, give us some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we surely would. All right, toodles.